hi, my name is Leighton Jin. I'm the Director of Development for the American Documentary and Animation Film Festival. We just completed our 13th year and we're very happy and excited to have the winners of our best documentary feature, John McDonald and Nina Schwanz. Schwanz, yeah. I'm sorry, I should have asked you how to pronounce it before we start. No worries. <laughs> now, congratulations. And this is one of the films I wanted to see, but unfortunately, during the course of the festival, I got pulled away and I, I just couldn't watch it. But can you talk to me about your film and uh, what it's about and then how you came across your subject? Okay, I'll start since Nina didn't become involved until we got into post production. So uh, mm -hmm. I was, uh, I was, um, called by a friend one day, one evening uh, and he's been a cinematographer on many projects that I've done in the past that we just happen to live within two blocks of each other at the time in South Pasadena, California. And he said, John, you have to run down to the corner right now and look eastward. And I go, I don't want to do that. My family's, we're having dinner. You know, he goes, no, you got to do it. It's your next documentary. He wouldn't tell me anything. So I run down there okay, take a look. And I see this man walking with three pack mules, fully packed, walking on the sidewalk of Huntington Drive, a main road that's going through that part of town. And um, I said, this is really interesting. Uh, so I just, um, that's kind of how we met. He didn't want to talk to me right away. He just kept walking. And I went back and got my car and then caught up with him and got ahead of him and basically stopped him and said, wait, 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 please just talk to me. <laughs> and so uh, he told me kind of the direction he was going that night, uh, some directions to spend the night somewhere outdoors. And um, so the next morning I went and found him and uh, uh, so began a 27 month, 200 days of shooting uh, journey with this man. Wow. Yeah. And Nina, what did you think when your dad told him about this guy was going to be his next documentary? What did you think about it? Oh, I thought, oh, great. You know, um, it's so exciting that, you know, my dad has so much energy and just, uh, yeah, he's always being inspired by something, you know? And so I thought it was great. He found a, a new, a new subject, uh, you know, six years later, it didn't seem so great anymore because the whole family's like, okay, when are you going to be done with this? <laughs> you know, But um, uh, I think that's about when I stepped in uh, as the editor. Um, and uh, yeah, then uh, I became involved. So, but yeah, I love, he, yeah, I'm so inspired by my dad's energy for always, always finding subjects and um, wanting to keep making films. So yeah. So were you brought in to help finish the project or what was, I know you said editor, but um, mm -hmm. what was the impetus to bring you in at that point, just to finish the film, to add to the film? Or... I think sort of, um, we were sort of playing it by ear. Um, we had another editor, but funding was really, was really hard. And uh, she got busy with another project and wasn't as available. Um, and then, uh, COVID happened, the pandemic started and I didn't have work. And I said, Hey dad, uh, why don't I give your film a shot? And uh, we sort of talked about a new way to structure the film that was um, a departure from uh, the way they had been uh, sort of working on it before the direction, different kind of direction. Um, and thus began uh, the editorial journey um, of the film that as it exists now, yeah. So I, I used to be a sports writer, so I get the whole idea of like starting a story, then restructuring it, or I uh, we call it rewriting it. Oh yeah. Um, I'll start with you, John. When she came in and helped you restructure it, how did it change the story from what you had to what it became? Well, she threw out all of my interviews because, as a traditional documentary filmmaker, I felt like I had to get coverage. So I covered so many people in interviews man on the street interviews, sit down interviews with different people that were involved and interacting in this man's journey uh, because there was a lot of confrontation along the way with uh, law enforcement, imprisonment, institutionalization, impounding of the mules. So there's a big story of this fight to be able to freely roam 
the land mm -hmm. and not have to have a car and not have to own a house, but just roam the land, a basic human right. So Nina said, well, that all sounds good. Why don't we just throw out all those interviews and just have him tell the story with his own voice and let people viewing the film decide what they think about it rather than have to have some validation or some other angle coming in from all these different people. And I said, wow, I think you might have something there. <laughs> so that's how much it changed a lot radically. Uh, the other thing is we gave up the idea of chronology uh, as far as following him from day one to the last day and um, pretty much just made, you know, just structured it so that it always had a story arc and little twists and turns along the way and humor sprinkled throughout, little bits of humor, moments of sadness, uh, just kind of paced it in a whole different kind of way to make basically the audience experience feel like there was no filmmaker there. It's just the audience being taken on a journey with the man. And I, it, it feels like a little bit of a generational thing. I always kind of feel like, I don't know if this is right. It's just me as a, a fan. It's like when Quentin Tarantino came with his movies, he, he really structured completely changed. And it seems like maybe that's Nina's generation. Do you think that's kind of the case with, seeing the movie a different way and creating a different structure is that is that kind of why you recommended that um i'm i think i come from more of a european art film uh tradition uh more okay. than generational but a lot of um um films that have really affected me um have a slower pace a more observational uh tone um and uh less sort of traditional talking heads like you would see in a documentary um so that was th that's where i come from um i come from an art background also more than a a film school background um so that's where and i i thought for this subject matter also with him and the way he lives his life so much of his time is alone with his mules um, and and uh, we should really spend that time with him um at this slower slightly slower uh a pace um yeah so i'm not sure if it's a generational thing maybe it's just a geographic uh artistic <laughs> preference yeah so listen to you that means i need to go watch more european uh, documentary <laughs> 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 um so your dad mentioned what he learned from you on this project what did you learn from your dad on this project because i know you've learned a lot from your dad oh um Oh, I've learned a lot from my dad over the years. And the most important is just to never give up, uh, to be persistent. And um, you never know, uh, you have to get that shot when you have the opportunity because you might never be able to get that shot again. And I take that, you know, to expand beyond, you know, just having a camera capturing something, but you never know if, if you have an opportunity in an instant that may never ever come again. So capture that um uh because you might regret it later um but then again you know a process like this sometimes mistakes happen too or happy accidents i like to call them um uh so that's something i think we both learned through this yeah and then our pre-interview this is your first official collaboration i know you, you've assisted each other but it's the first time you've collaborated on a project is that correct uh, yes. Yeah. Well, my dad's the director. Um, I really consider myself the editor. Um, I um, come from sort of like a video art background, as I mentioned before. So I have some of my own really weird sort of pieces that wouldn't even fall into a, a documentary category. Um, but uh, that this is my first uh, feature editorial project. Um, and also the first time I've uh, worked on one of my dad's documentaries. Yeah. But we help each other. We've helped each other a lot over the years with with different things. And will there be any uh, future collaborations with the two of you? Are you guys thinking about the next project together, or are you guys both working on your own separate projects? Uh, Dad, do you well, I I I've been. My wife has asked me to retire from making documentaries. I am seventy five years old, 
So, you know, I don't know if there will be another documentary to collaborate on, uh, but I'd like to think that, you know, if things come up that, um, you know, there might be an opportunity. You know, I do have, uh, just like almost every documentary filmmaker that's been doing it for decades, I have many unfinished projects, some which, some which could possibly be resurrected and worked on. Uh, but the problem is also uh, if you were shooting on low definition before high def came out, there's a certain, you have to almost wait long enough so it becomes these uh, archival pieces <laughs> 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 because it won't fly uh, being shown against the high def. But uh, for instance, I went to China five times uh, mm -hmm. covering a story about two Chinese opera characters. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea was that this lost art form that is fading away in China uh, and was such a Chinese treasure kind of was juxtaposed against, you know, the rising China in the economic world and the political world. And there's this ancient art form that is just being turned away from. And yeah. that here were two people trying to practice this art form uh and yeah but i enjoyed the journey of going to china and doing that and the whole thing also just by myself all the equipment um so i could just i, I went once actually as your pa that's true in 2010 <laughs> yeah. nina went i said how would you like to be my pa yes <laughs> we were there we were there together in 2010 that's right yeah yeah so well, that's that sounds example. like a great project yeah. oh yeah yeah it sounds sounds real good but uh I thought this is a natural for, you know, maybe get some rich Chinese Americans who want to fund it. And they go, why would you want to make a document about Chinese opera? That's something my grandparents were interested in. I'm not interested in that. And oh, that's boy. what I'm talking about. The whole it's lost. It's lost uh, this huge audience that it once had. Yeah. On a side note, isn't that what uh, Bruce Lee's parents did? Didn't they do Chinese opera? And that's why you wound up being born in San Francisco? That sounds that sounds like something I have heard. Yeah. 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 And it's very possible that that's why he got into the martial arts, because there is so much martial arts kind of things, warrior characters in Chinese opera. And one of my characters actually played the Monkey King character. That was his role. Oh. And the Monkey King is a very clever warrior who is a very interesting Chinese opera character. Yeah. Come on, Nina, let's make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny. Just to follow up, about 15 years ago, my dad flew out and met me in the New Mexico desert to help me with a piece I was working on there. So I have all of this footage of us in uh, White Sands, New Mexico, Roswell, in the desert doing, I don't even know what. I didn't really have an idea, but I thought, let's go here, let's shoot, and then I'll figure it out later. Well, I never made the project, so maybe uh, my dad can offer some... Uh, little help with that when if I start that up again. Oh, these both sound good. I mean, I, I think I know what it might be if you're in Roswell. I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing we, what it might be. And we even acted in front of the camera sometimes too. We became characters in the film. Uh, <laughs> that was very <laughs> well I love your collaboration. I think I think your uh, Chinese opera would be great. And gosh, everyone's always interested about what's going on in Roswell and you know, just questions about our uh, our reality and our place in the universe. So, if if it's the kind of movie I think it is, <laughs> I don't know if I'm way off. <laughs> yeah, I I don't even know what it was. I mean, I think it was was something that was in Nina's head, and I just went along with it and uh, <laughs> loaned my support. <laughs> and then, can you talk to me about your experiences at uh, at Amdocs this year? It was it was it your first times. At Amdocs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first time. Yeah. And then what were, what were your thoughts? I know we talked a little bit off camera. Okay, well, um, number one party festival of all time, and I've been around the world to many different festivals, and uh, it's just, uh, it's it's like the ultimate home tour. The venues where the parties are, I mean, it's everything that you would ever imagine seeing in Architectural Digest. It's like we were there. Uh, and I love that. I love the uh, people that came to who were invited. It was such a great collection of people. Uh, the, I love the volunteers. Um, I loved my host family. 
the husband and wife who took care of me while I was there and all their filmmakers had that same kind of treatment as I did. So uh, the venue, fantastic sound system. And um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It was, it was amazing. Oh, well, we loved having you. And Nina, you just did a quick cameo here. Not the, not the full stay, right? Yeah, super, super quick. Um, but the film looked fantastic and it was such a joy to sit in that huge theater with such a beautiful image, great sound and, you know, have my fountain soda and popcorn too. I didn't have to, <laughs> <laughs> I always like that, you know, so yeah. Well, you're always welcome to come back. You know, there's a lot of stuff they do at the cultural center. They have a lot of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's going to cover for now. There's something I haven't covered. Well, I know what I've got to ask you. Where are you guys taking your film next? Um, I just heard yesterday about a film festival, which is happening in September. Oh. And it's in Italy. That's all I can say, because I can't pre-announce where these things are because they're still in the selection process. But I guess they want it bad enough that they have already booked it while they're still... Yeah, so... And then another one that's actually in the United States and same situation, I can't say yet, but, uh -oh. um, you know, it's the thing as filmmakers all know, you have your list of film festivals, you try to have enough money to just enter those film festivals and you'll get into a very small percentage. And that doesn't mean your film is bad or anything like that. It's just, we understand that festivals are looking to program a variety of different things. And, um, oh, and I should bring up that I just love the pairing of the uh, film that was shown prior to ours about the man who uh, walked the highways and didn't drive a car for 17 years and didn't speak to have that precede our film. And what was that? A Thousand Shining Lights, I think it was called. Oh, um, um... yeah. Uh, that was just like such a perfect lead in, like two characters, <laughs> who basically are are walking and are not going to uh, ever use an automobile and basically are kind of anti-automobile. So no, yeah, it's no. there. American auto uh, companies probably disappointed to hear that. <laughs> 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 or yeah. any auto company, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell your wife we hope you don't retire yet. I want to. I want to see the one on the Chinese opera. Hopefully, it doesn't cause any problems with the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll. And see. then Nina, yeah. let me ask you one more. One more thing is: mm -hmm. Are you? Are you planning any other documentaries? I know you. You do something a little bit different, but are you? Are you? Are you? Do you have any other plans for documentaries in the future? Because I think yours is a little bit different, not necessarily documentaries, correct? Yeah, um, not right now. Um, but what I've noticed, what I've realized um, on this festival circuit is all sorts of short experimental films um, qualify as documentaries um, because they're not scripted. So uh, it's possible um, I could end up, you know, making a documentary um, <laughs> per se, you know. Um, but I'm also a painter, so I've, I'm getting back into painting and my creative projects. And then I, I work full time as a colorist, so I don't have too much time to make a feature documentary. But there's probably something in the works somewhere in here. So yeah, maybe you could dad could do documentary on you and your art. Oh gosh, <laughs> he's tried. I tried. Oh, oh I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, one of the one of the few documentaries I did see was uh, a son who documented did a documentary on his mother and all mm. the films that uh, he filmed over the years made it to a really beautiful project. So that's that's mm -hmm. what crossed my mind when you were talking about oh, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's going to do it for right now. Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to talk to us and congratulations on the award. Yeah. And uh, good luck with everything at the film festival and everything. And thank you so much. And, you know, this is right before Easter, so have a happy Easter. Oh, thank you. You too. Yeah, thank you, you too. very much. Thank you.